Jim Stackville from jimstackville.com. I want to share with you one of the key determinants of success in building a great advice practice, which is who we're actually going to apply the advice to. Who is the ideal client? So I just want to run through what we think are the five criteria of a good ideal client. Now, we recognise that not all clients want advice or need advice, but we've all got a legacy base to start with, and we need to determine which amongst our current client base are really going to be the advice takers, and which clients, no matter how we may approach them, will only ever be product takers. And the first and the most crucial fundamental element in determining this is one, these clients take advice. We've had track record with these clients, they've acted on our instructions in the past, they fill in our forms, when asked to turn up at a meeting at a certain time, they do. They, 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 not, they might not roll over on the advice all the time, they may challenge you, but fundamentally, they take your advice. We can't help clients achieve the outcomes that are important to them, they don't fundamentally act upon the advice you give them. It's not a matter of how much funds under management they've got, how big their salaries are, how big the debts they require are. It's not a matter of their product in their balance sheet or in their earning statement. It's do they fundamentally take your advice. That's the first criteria. The second criteria, on the basis you can't establish a relationship with people you don't like, they've got to be enjoyable or respectful to work for, with. If they don't respect you, or if they're not enjoyable to work with, if you think, oh, it's a stack pools today, and you think that I can't stand working with those people, then we can't build an ongoing relationship year in, year out, where you're actively caring for them, if they fundamentally generate the cold and pricklies in your head, I just don't like dealing with these people. So again, it's not a question of how much money they've got in their bank account, how well known they are in the industry. If you don't have a fundamental level of enjoyment or respect doing business with them, they're not going to be an ideal advice client. Third element, you can add value to their lives. You don't need Monday night's lotto numbers for your plans to come off. You have to be able to add value to them. You can actually solve some of the uh, complexities in their lives and help them go from where they are closer towards their outcomes. That's core and fundamental to actually identifying. It's not a miracle that they're required to actually do the work. Thirdly, fourthly, <laughs> They've got to be suffering from what we call complexity. Now this is probably the most difficult attribute of the five. Complexity is that they're in a place in their financial life that they ultimately don't want to be in. But they haven't got the wherewithal to get out of that place. So they haven't got the understanding, the experience, the knowledge, the time, the objectivity, or simply just the, the, the wherewithal to get to where they need to get. They've got to be facing a complexity. If it's simple to them, they just need a product and that solves everything for them, then they don't need advice. Clients that don't have complexity don't need advice. Your job is to identify what the complexity is. And lastly, and fundamental, they can pay your bill. And they're going to pay your bill because they position the value on what they're trying to achieve, not the effort you're going to put in or the products you're going to sell. Good luck. If you'd like more information on the evolving advice industry, don't hesitate to hit the subscribe button above. Or alternatively, if you want a lot more information on articles and blogs that I regularly post, go across to jimstackpool.com. I look forward to seeing you there.